I guess uh, are those provisions that uh, Mr. Petrovich perhaps sets forth a very classic denunciation of the whole process that's been pursued <coughs> and uh, his points are delivered very authoritatively. My concern is that there is no real response presented in the materials shared with us to that. Uh, page 357 indicates that hazardous waste units do leak and they apparently leak in massive numbers. Uh, I'm, I'm real curious as to what the commission felt was being done if, to refute uh, that material that's set out by Mr. Petrovich. Mr. Petrovich is saying is... Just speak up, please. Yes. What he's saying is that if you go around the country and you look at all the facilities, many of which were already in operation before RECRA was even passed by our Congress, that many of those facilities are leaking, uh, and have been leaking. Many of them have been closed but are still leaking. They have become Superfund sites. He does not distinguish between newly permitted, full permit part B, hazardous waste facilities. Well, set out on pages 361 to 65 is a complete denunciation of this project based on health grounds. And again, uh, there is no response presented in the material shared with us. Is there any I, comment I to share with us today about that? I hope that I shared that with you in my <coughs> opening remarks when I dealt with risk. Sir, let me expand just for a minute. If you look into any literature, whether it's toxicological literature, or the risk literature, or the chemistry literature, or the engineering literature, and if you go back, you don't have to go back very far until you're going to be finding conflicting opinions and conflicting data. You have to sort through that and carefully, very carefully determine what is still valid and what is not valid and what is, uh, can be substantiated and has it had peer review and have the, has the person's colleague, the person's colleague agreed <coughs> with that data. And I think if you did that with this man's opinions that you would find they do not agree with. I'll go on from there. Uh, I'm not here to debate that. I just want some clarification from the standpoint of the commission. I have occasion, of, as all of us do, to serve on a number of different commissions as ex officio. Another one I serve on is the Commission on Hazardous Response. And I'm well aware that Granville County does not have an adequate response team in place uh, to deal with either this kind of hazard or even lesser ones. And in fact, on page 462, it says Granville County, this is your report to us, does not have a hazardous material response team and cannot afford to establish an equipped one, uh, estimating that the cost uh, of dealing with a contamination uh, could exceed $2,000 on each occasion that there's any kind of problem, uh, as well as a $3 million cost in setting up such a hazardous response team. But again, there isn't anything said about the alternative. It just sets out the fact that uh, there isn't such a facility. No, sir, and I think Mr. Mr. Hennett adequately uh, answered that in his earlier statements. Uh, I think the, the last statement that Mr. Mr. Hennett made in, his, in our presentation to the Council of State was this is not the final site. We have to go through a very strict and disciplined permitting process an environmental impact assessment process <coughs> and all of those various components have to be addressed and we have to meet those. If we can't meet them, we won't get a permit. There will be no facility on this site. Well, that's a categorical <coughs> terminology, by the way. We've been talking about sites that were suitable sites and those, there were several that were looked at that were considered at one time to be suitable sites <coughs> until this month we didn't have any site that was designated as the preferred site when the commission met on december 4th i think it was they designated this site as a preferred site now if this preferred site is indeed conveyed to the hazardous waste management commission it could not then legally be used until after obtaining all the necessary permits state and federal and completion of the environmental impact statement only then could it qualify to be designated as a final site? 
these are steps that were set out in the procedures and in the law, and it adds some confusion. But I believe that's a fair statement of, of where we are. If, if this site has, has been selected as the preferred site by the one authority that has responsibility to do that. And after a, a long process, the issue before the Council of State is whether to approve the transfer of land from the Department of Agriculture to another entity of state government. And that conveyance, that transfer is, is uh, different only because of the issue that we've been debating from other transfers of Department of Agriculture land as, for example, the transfer of land from the Department of Agriculture to the Department of Corrections in, in Burke County, uh, for which the department was compensated with an exchange of land and which could certainly be done here, I think would be, uh, would be expected. Commissioner Brooks. Governor, I noticed uh, there's a, some summary material in here but none of the capacity, when it, there is a discussion about capacity, and there are several documents, perhaps from a number of sources dealing with that, but none of the capacity for solvents, recovery, incineration of solids and sludges and liquids or landfills that North, that North Carolina is proposing to build a facility to accommodate is needed by any industry in the five states that this incinerator is being designed for, and it, it, there's nothing in here that speaks to that. Would y'all leave something out, Daryl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not certain, Mr. Commissioner. Are you saying that there's no information there that suggests that industry supports the need for this facility? No, that the industry in these five states are in fact producing those particular kinds of waste that would be needed to be shipped to this facility. When, when the governor made his determination of the size of facilities that are necessary, the volume and the type of facilities, the statute required him to consider at least eight different considerations from information. And in that information, showed him where exactly there was a need for the facilities and what could be offered as a part of the regional agreement. And as a result, he uh, and then authorized the Hazardous Waste Management Commission to go forward to build those facilities. I think that has been an issue that the General Assembly has reviewed and has said that there is a need. They, they reviewed it intensively. For the last time, they reviewed it for over a year in a study commission as they were trying to decide how this would best be managed. And they um, suggested that this was a reasonable approach. And that's covered in the capacity assurance plan also. Just out of curiosity, this term sensitive receptors I've never heard of before, in all honesty. Where, where did that come from? Is that prescribed by some federal or state? Uh, no, in the, fact, it came from Granville County talking about the various institutions and other sensitive uh, people who were there in the area and how they could be uh, dealt with in case this facility was there. Well, and, we made up a new term. Yes. And that essentially defines the people on whom this facility would impact. Is that right? I don't think that that's necessarily so, sir, and that uh, the um, facility has been estimated to impact on those institutionalized citizens uh, to a very minor degree. The uh, Most of the institutions there are at least a three-mile distance away from the proposed site location. There's only one institution that is within a quarter of a mile of the side of the property, and that buffer is prepared on that map to show you where a quarter of a mile happens to be. We have talked about risk. Dr. Turner said earlier on he could envision no in, uh, event or calamity that would cause an evacuation of those patients and residents of those institutions. The operation of this facility would envision shipping or importing how much toxic material from abroad in order to make it efficient to operate. You mean overseas? From overseas. The Commission has said that it will not receive foreign waste in this facility. The Commission's operator has said that it will not receive foreign waste in this facility. We envision that there are plenty of waste out there in the marketplace in North Carolina and the agreement states to fill this 
uh, need for this facility, and I showed that from my poster a few moments ago. Plus two more incinerators. Yes. The one that's in South Carolina right now and one that uh, Kentucky, I believe, is considered. Incidentally, Mississippi is proposing to get into the agreement by offering an incinerator. They'll have the pleasure of going through all this. Thank you, Governor. Mr. Brooks. The Secretary. Governor, I, I will be very, very brief. I, as I told you over a phone call that I, I would weigh this issue and, and that uh, Dr. Turner and his good folks uh, would have to convince me upon uh, the evidence that this site would be appropriate, and uh, I'm not trying to be at all disrespectful, but I've had no help today in this regard. <laughs> I am I'm still very deeply troubled, Governor, by the Caldwell County site. You know where I'm from. I've talked to all those people that are involved on several occasions. And the big objection I have is that our guidelines right now are designed, in my opinion, in a very uh, disastrous manner. They, they say take our best state land, take our best private land, and, and put a site on it for the convenience of those who produce the uh, material. I, I don't quite understand. <laughs> simple matter, Governor, and I, I don't mean to be nonchalant about it, but I think we all have to get our heads together after this is over. I'm not going to vote for it today. Get our heads together, do something about it, and I'll pledge to you publicly that I will, under the right circumstances, and not just be an objection to it, but I think we've got to go back and redo it, get people together on this, and quit yelling at one another, and get it done. commission and asked a lot of questions, been through a lot of information, so the fact that I'm not going to ask some questions doesn't mean that I haven't uh, reviewed the material necessarily. Uh, I think I've seen two or three, three, three or four areas that to me gives me some concern. I know the commission's had a, a tremendous task, a thankless task, and I think with the legislation that was passed that I'll mention in just a few minutes, an impossible task. Uh, I don't want to send the wrong signals to our neighbors to the south, uh, South Carolina, Alabama, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Obviously, we have a problem, and, and we must deal with that problem. But I do have some concerns. I have some very serious concerns concerning the 11th uh, Circuit Court of Appeals ruling as to whether or not we may be putting ourselves in the same position that Alabama and South Carolina finds themselves now. And I certainly sympathize with the position that they're in and wouldn't be a part of trying to bully them in any way uh, to accept our ways. The second thing, uh, the rules set out in the report that I received that these facilities could only could not be located when the corporate uh, limits of municipalities, unless within that municipality was a, uh, a, a site that was zoned or, or or part of its zone as uh, industrial or industrial development. Uh, while I know that the town of Butner does not have a formal charter, the town of Butner is bigger than a lot of municipalities across the state of North Carolina, and the Secretary of Human Resources serves as its mayor, and one of the directors of the hospital serves as its uh, city manager. We provide uh, police protection through the state and water and garbage and other uh, services. Uh, as any other municipal, uh, municipality. And if I understand it correctly, there's some uh, seven, 8,000 people uh, concentrated in this area that would be a municipality. And by the technicality of excluding, I think it's not fair since it uh, does not give that community the uh, extraterritorial zoning rights that all the other incorporated communities have a mile to two miles outside of their uh, incorporated limits. Uh, that seems to be unfair to me and would put this uh, site selection uh, in jeopardy. Uh, I think another thing though, when the <coughs> legislature enacted the legislation uh, authorizing or, or approving the agreement and setting up the Hazardous Waste Commission, that they must have clearly had in mind 
that we would that it would be cited on private property uh, because they exempted about all state property that you can imagine that the state owns across the state. In fact, when you got down to it and making the elim elim uh, uh, part of the eliminations on uh, on what could be considered, it was down to two sites, and I think that's a an, an error. Uh, and I think the legislature needs to revisit that. And if they want state land to be considered, they should remove all the restrictions that have been imposed statewide on, the, on a fair and adequate consideration of state property. And that's why I think uh, it should go back there for that consideration. Another concern of mine is, is that the Umstead Hospital, the Murdoch Center, and we take, when we take the kind of uh, institutions and populations that make up uh, the state and federal institutions in this community, uh, I have a concern that uh, we don't need that. It wouldn't be very practical to add any more stress to the situation that already exists. And I think that given the fact that we've not met the, the, the time frames, the legislature's coming in in January, uh, we don't want to send the wrong signal to our neighbors. We want to be responsible in, in handling our uh, hazardous waste. And, and I support being in a reasonable agreement. If we can be in that agreement and have the protections and the things that would uh, would be beneficial to those that participate in that agreement. I would not be in favor of us being vulnerable to lawsuits or whatever that would, would that would force us to take uh, away from other states that was not doing their part. Uh, so I think with the General Assembly coming back in January, the issues here as it relates to state, if they want us to consider state-owned property, let's remove those restrictions and consider state-owned property. I don't have any problem with that. Uh, and. I don't think you can gerrymander, uh, gerrymander a site selection as was, you know, as it could appear uh, in, in this process. And, and, and when it narrowed it down to such a few considerations, I think the Hazardous Waste Commission's hands were basically tied in the process. And I think that's why the site that they recommended is, is the particular site they recommended. I believe if they had other uh, options. And, and, and Secretary Edmiston believed that the General Assembly will want to reopen the issue. I would, get that ball I would, bouncing around again. I would think so. I would think yes. so. That's the <laughs> you do. The, you, you, you have to operate within the mandates of the law. Within the mandates of this law, I don't think we can realistically expect any hazardous waste commission to ex, to uh, locate a, a responsible site on state-owned property. And that's, that's the problem. Thank you. Thank you. One, one question, I had a concern about a letter dated November the 21st to Mr. Darrell Powell, Powell uh, from Steve Leonard, wetland specialist in the Department of Environment, Health, and Natural Resources. And the paragraph that's important says a highlighted zippy-toned wetlands additional map is enclosed as requested by you this morning. I would recommend another look at the east side of Picture Creek. Due to the unusual configuration of wetlands depicted along the power line, had we had the Granville soil survey sheets, more of the picture soil may have been shown as wetlands, since it is presently considered hydric by all the soil science, science